Today, I'm going to be talking about how to do a psychic reading. This is something that has been with me my whole life. Now, let's start right off the bat with what does it mean to be psychic? A lot of people confuse being psychic and being a medium, being intuitive. There's so many different titles. Now, being psychic means it is an ability where we can tap into someone else's life path. We can tap into someone else's future and also the potential of their future. Because when we do a psychic reading for someone, it doesn't always necessarily mean that what we see or sense will necessarily happen. What we read is that person's energy and where they are at in their life at that time. Meaning, if you read for someone and you sense that maybe they might meet someone or they might get a great opportunity, okay, that's great. But that information is coming in based on where that person is at in their life. So if they maybe do more healing work, then they might accelerate and bring forward the experience faster. Or maybe they had a traumatic event or something happens, or maybe they sabotage a relationship or a dynamic that could have helped them to attract this incident. Then things might take a little bit longer to take place as well. When we do psychic readings, there's something else that I want to share with you as well. Being intuitive as well, because people ask me, so what is the difference between psychic and being intuitive? That's a really great question. Being intuitive means that you are reading for someone that of something that's happening in the present moment. For example, you can do an intuitive body scan, an intuitive reading for what is happening in someone's current life. Maybe um, you're picking, trying to help someone discover some issues that they're dealing with. That's more called an intuitive reading, diving into issues where they're experiencing in the here and now. Maybe things that's based on the past as well. Whereas being psychic leans a little bit more towards reading the future, reading that person's potential. So if any of you here is ready to dive into today, how to do a psychic reading, let's do it together. So first of all, when you read for someone, whether you knew or not, it doesn't matter. We all have psychic abilities. I repeat, we all have psychic abilities. It's now just a question. Would you like to tap into it? Would you like to explore? Would you like to strengthen it? That's the bigger question. It's not about whether you, if, whether you are or not. You are. It's just, do you really want to use it? It's hard to be in the flow of something when we fear it or when we have a resistance to it. But when there's a willingness to learn, that willingness is what creates the bridge and the, that, that narrows the gap, allowing you to explore, allowing you to dive into that. So when we read for someone, number one, if the client is stressed, your reading is going to be stressed, period. If the client is stressed, your reading is going to be stressed. Why? Because when we do a psychic reading, we connect to a person's energy. We connect to their vibration. Now, stress and fear, resistance and rigidity, it's a very low vibration to tap into. It pulls your energy down as well. Unless you are in a strong and powerful and nice stable state, meaning you don't get stressed or start second guessing yourself when you see a fearful client. This is very important. And how you start to cultivate that is actually by learning to know what are your strengths? What are you good at? So if you're going to do a psychic reading, 
make sure that when people come to you, they know what you are good at reading. So if you market it, if you advertise it, if you talk to people about it, maybe you're good at helping people to read about their businesses. Maybe you're excellent at reading for people about relationships. Maybe you're wonderful at reading for people maybe about friendship or money. It can be anything. But normally you will know where you feel most comfortable, where you feel you kind of, where the information just comes, where it just flows. There's no rigidity. You don't feel like you've been drip fed pieces of information and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. Right? We've all been in that situation. So when you do readings, make sure that you attract people who knows what you're good at. I can't stress that enough. But that also means that you need to know what you are good at. You need to know what you love. And I find that people do the best psychic readings on topics that they themselves love. So that's really important. So look, discover, you know, move through certain topics and areas in your life. Things in your life that you perhaps have accomplished successfully yourself as well. Because that also will help you to build your resilience. That will also help you to build your confidence. And the more your confidence is built, the more solid it is, the more of a clear conduit you are going to be. The clearer you're going to get assistance from your spirit council and the clearer the guidance is going to be from the person who you're reading for. You're going to have clearer information from them as well. Because you know and understand where your emotions and thoughts stop and start and where your clients' thoughts and emotions stop and start. Now, how do we do that? Number two, you need to have excellent boundaries. You need to make sure that you have good personal boundaries. Good personal boundaries translates not just psychologically and also in the expression of your environment towards people, but it also gets expressed into your energetic field. Have you ever met someone and you're just talking to them and you kind of like feel, wow, you get a clear sense where and how far you can push this person, right? I've experienced that many times. Now that is because this person is very clear as to what their boundaries are. And that clarity transcends through their field to yours. And you pick up on it. You can sense that. So that's also a very important point to remember. When you do psychic readings for someone, and also take note, because if their message is triggering you, you are going to struggle to get a clear message to come through. That's where, and, and, and the, sometimes a client can throw you completely off base. You know, we cannot always predict, you know, even though they come to you with something that you know you're good at, a business, but now maybe they talk to you about their love life that's a mess and it's not your strength and it's influencing their business. Oh my goodness, now what? <laughs> right, so now these two are coming together. This is a good moment where you can do breath work. And when I say breath work, I love to do the alpha brainwave set where you breathe in the mouth, out the nose, and it helps you to really ease into a nice state that helps you to release stress. And the client can do it with you. It's actually great if the both of you can do it because then you get the client also to calm down, which means their state is going to be calmer. And what does that mean? Your ability to read them is going to be better. So that's another also good tip that you can just do right at the start before you start your psychic readings. Now, when we look at judgment, we have to take also our judgment out of the equation. It's hard sometimes when you read something and you hear the story and then we already think, oh, but wow, but if that happened, then that, that must be the case. So I might get involved with this or I would do it differently. This is when we get involved. You have to be a natural conduit when you read for someone. That means you have to take your judgment out of it. You have to completely pretend 
that you're hearing about this incident or this story or this question for the first time, right? For the first time. That's really super important. That's something that I've learned and really truly helped me a lot in my career as well when I would do readings for people. So now when we look at, um, hang on, we had a really good question here. So Christina, you asked, how come is the ability to read well depending on what you read? That's a good question, meaning life area. So the reason for that is this is just for some people because let's just say, for example, you just came out of a divorce and your heart is broken. You feel really upset. Now you have someone else coming to you, talking to you about their divorce or their relationship, um, trauma or stress. You're still trying to get your life kind of on track regarding that. To read for someone else in the same issue might be really hard. It can pull you into quite a very dense vibration and it will be much harder in that vibration to get clear messages from that person's guides and from your guides as well. So that's why it's really important to read on things where you feel you're in the flow, where you feel positive, where you feel strong in, right? That's really important, but it's a really great question. And so another point that we also have is sometimes you might have entities coming in. You might have entities coming in that's just trying to ruin the reading, you know, sabotaging you. And this is also where if you have good boundaries, it will not bother you. And you will also recognize them. You will feel suddenly when the message starts, when you when you read for someone, you'll find yourself start to get into a flow that it will just come. The, the messages, even though it's just in drips and drabs, it will feel there's a beautiful flow to it. It feels graceful. The moment it starts to feel stressful or something doesn't feel right or suddenly information changes really fast or you're pulled into you know, this, this, this direction, you're being pulled into a different direction or you start to maybe feel a little bit intimidated, you feel a little bit um, unsure, you start to feel maybe a bit fearful, you start to feel, wow, now suddenly I feel blank. This is when entities can come into play. And what really works often for me that works is when I tell them, I command you to leave my space right now. When you command entities to leave, they have to leave. I normally command them to leave in the light because when the light is there, I normally hold the white light because the white light is beautiful and it normally neutralizes everything that you send to it. So when I sense or see entities, I just send them to the light and it neutralizes their presence. So it can't bother me anymore when I do the session. So another point also is people always get confused when they go for a psychic reading, thinking that the psychic has to just unravel it all for them. When you go for readings, it's actually teamwork takes teamwork to make a dream work so when you work with someone it's really important that the full success of the reading also depends on your client's feedback on their ability to help guide you if you pick up on something you will normally ask them do you relate to that do you sense that as well is this something that you might um, have seen before or how does it feel when I say that to you this type of feedback can also help you to stay on track. Because one thing that I've also seen when people do psychic readings for someone is that if that person, if your client spends time with, a, with someone else, maybe a partner, a wife, a friend, a colleague, other people's energies is in the person who you're reading for's energy as well. So that's why in the beginning of a reading, it's actually quite important that you set the intention that you fully connect just to that person, state their name, state where they are, um, their date of birth and where they are located so that you know that you're connecting to the right person. Because sometimes also psychics can read the energy of people that their client has spent a lot of time with. And so sometimes the reading can get a little bit blurry because the, the, the psychic is still getting information but it's not information directly relating to that person. So that's also something to keep in mind as well. And so when you start the session, I love to always ask myself, I ask my guides to step in, I ask um, the person who I'm reading for as guides to step in, and I ask for myself to be used as a conduit for the highest and best purposes. 
for the highest and best purposes for the highest and best outcome for this person that I'm going to be reading for. And then it's also important that you are crystal clear with your intention. And that means a crystal clear question. The question must be clear because then you will get a clear answer. And also what helps really well is if you record the session because then it's something that you can always go back to because sometimes when you channel, when that information starts to come in, my goodness, it can really start to take you to a different place. And you don't always necessarily consciously remember everything and all the messages that came through you and out of you as well. So now, having given you a fun idea of what a psychic reading could look like, what to prepare, you know, the intentions to set. I hope you had your pen and paper there ready with you. I would love to actually talk you now through a psychic reading that you can even do for yourself. So let's have fun with this. I'm going to talk you through this process step by step. All right. So let's start now by taking a nice deep breath. And now, let's start first off by calming down. Because psychic information flows so much better when we are calm. Because when we are calm, we are in a harmonious state. And it's through that harmonious state that you are able to really fully connect because fear, doubt, rigidity, all this, all these vibrations sabotages our ability to really fully, truly connect to our higher self and also to our guides and to the person who we are reading for, to their guides as well. I invite you now to hear Feel, see, or sense yourself in a nice open space. And as you're finding yourself in that open space, connect now to a beautiful waterfall. Imagine that you're standing under one, a powerful, healing waterfall. And as you're standing underneath that waterfall, feel how that water is flowing through you from your head down your body through every single cell in your body, flowing through you and out of you. Releasing stress. Releasing fatigue or exhaustion that you might have. And now, also acknowledge the difference between your identity and other people's stress. So that all the people that you perhaps had contact with today or spoken to, let their stress just drain out of you, just out of you, just down, 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 into the earth.
and down. Let's move into what's called the theta brainwave state. So we'll be breathing in the nose and out the nose 13 times. And the 13th breath, we'll hold it as long as we can. You're going to feel a little bit dizzy, and that's normal. It's perfectly okay. And then we'll exhale. And after that, you're going to move into a very powerful intuitive state. Theta brainwave state is the best state to do any type of intuitive or psychic or medium work or healing work in as well, just so that you know. So let's do this together. Let's breathe in through the nose, out the nose, in 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 the nose, out the nose, breathe in the nose, out the nose. Breathe in the nose, breathe out the nose. Breathe in the nose, breathe out the nose. Breathe in the nose, and out the nose. Breathe in the nose, and out the nose. Breathe in the nose and out the nose. Breathe in the nose and out the nose. Breathe in the nose and out the nose. One more nice deep breath in your nose and hold your breath. And hold. Hold it as long as you feel comfortable. Allowing yourself to drop into that silence and that stillness that comes forth. And now, as you're finding yourself there, let's have a question. What question do you have? I would highly recommend that you choose a question that doesn't trigger a lot of fear, especially because you're doing this for yourself now, right? So choose a question that doesn't trigger too much fear. And now, have that question in your mind, be thinking of the question. Drop that question into your heart. Imagine it's like a ball of light that's dropping into your heart. And from your heart, that question in the ball of light is now expanding. Expanding and expanding and expanding. Imagine that it's just like this beautiful light that just radiates outwards. As far as you can see. Holding the intention, I ask for the highest and best answer to come forward. I ask for the highest and best answer to come forward. Now, as you're doing that, take note of all your body's sensations. Because the answer can come to you in the form of audibly hearing it. You might sense it or see it in images. 
You might get a gut feeling in your body. Yes or no. You might feel maybe a tingling sensation or a nervous feeling or a positive feeling. You might see colors. Take note of what you see, hear, feel, see, or sense. Whatever your answer was, write it down and take note if it's something that you maybe don't understand. How does it make you feel when you look at the answer that you write down? Is there maybe a story or a memory or something that comes to mind that you can link to a possible answer to the question that you have. Notice colors as well, were they colors? Because a color and how you feel in relationship to that color can also be an answer in itself. Maybe you saw a parent or a person and you think, well, this person have to do with it well does that person normally give you a certain type of advice maybe the person had a message for you what would that person say to you you see answers can even come forward in forms like that and feel free to share with me if you had any answers coming forward and maybe you don't know how to how to you know untangle it let's see if we can help so it's very important to really truly take note how you feel what do you see what do you feel what do you sense and that means and it also requires you to be really truly fully connected to you, to notice sensations, to notice images, to have that self-awareness. Because being psychic is very connected to self-awareness. That's very important. And that means you also need to have a good relationship with yourself and your body and how your body communicates to you as well so i hope that that was helpful to you and that is what i had for you today <laughs>